I want to talk about the George Floyd murder in Minneapolis. And specifically, I want to talk about what went wrong, why it was wrong, and what needs to be done to begin to start getting things right. It's hard to believe that George Floyd was murdered a week ago, May 25, 2020. On Monday, May 25, 2020, a black teenager used her smartphone to record the final minutes of George Floyd's life in the world at the hand of four Minneapolis police officers. She watched three of them stand, kneel, observe, and support a fourth who held his knee, pressed his knee on George Floyd's neck for more than 10 minutes while Floyd lay on his stomach with his hands cuffed behind his back, pleading that he could not breathe, begging for help, and then die. She watched as each of the officers heard George Floyd's cries for help and heard and saw his desperate effort to breathe. She watched and heard as George Floyd screamed for his mother who passed away more than a year ago. She watched onlookers call on them to pick Floyd up and roll him over and seat him in a cruiser. She watched as onlookers proclaimed that George Floyd was not resisting arrest. She captured the sights and the sounds of racism and materialism and militarism that resulted in the death of George Floyd, an unarmed black man at the hands of four Minneapolis police officers. And when the footage of that teenager's smartphone was shared with the public, the Minneapolis Police Department fired the four officers. Fired them, but didn't arrest a single one of them. None of them was arrested for assault or for murder. Criminal acts that were plainly visible from the video that was released to the public by the teenage girl. The Hennepin County Prosecutor Attorney didn't arrest or charge anybody. The police department didn't arrest anybody. Strangely, during a press conference on May 28, three days after George Floyd was killed, the Hennepin County prosecutor said that, quote, there is other evidence that does not support, close quote, that a crime occurred when George Floyd was killed. And then the county prosecutor and the U.S. Attorney for Minnesota called on the public and George Floyd's family for patience and urged them to trust the process. Trust a process that resulted in the death of George Floyd. Trust a process that resulted in George Floyd's killers not being arrested. When the police department knew who they were, Trust a process that no explanation was given as to why the killers weren't arrested. Instead, on May 28, the mayor of Minneapolis asked the governor of Minnesota to dispatch the state militia, the National Guard, to Minneapolis. Not to arrest the four killers but to suppress protests from angry and grief-stricken people of all backgrounds about the deliberate act of four police officers to kill an unarmed, defenseless black man. Named George Floyd. 
That was wrong. That was wrong. But that wasn't the first wrong. Hiring, training, and retaining those four police officers, those four obviously culturally incompetent, obviously abusive, obviously unprofessional actors to work as law enforcement officers was wrong. It was wrong to dispatch four police officers to respond to a suspected forgery of $20. Why in the world do you send four armed police officers to respond to a $20 property crime? George Floyd is dead over the suspicion that somebody tried to pass a forged $20 bill or a counterfeit $20 bill? That shows the capitalism, the materialism that went along with the racism and the militarism at work in this situation. It was wrong to force George Floyd to his belly with his hands cuffed behind his back after he was not resisting arrest and wasn't hindering efforts to place him in a vehicle. It was wrong to have three of the four officers stand by and watch as the fourth held his knee on George Floyd's neck for more than nine minutes. It was wrong to deny George Floyd assistance from first responders. One of the witnesses said, listen, he can't breathe. His nose is bleeding. I'm a trained uh, first responder. Let me check him. It was wrong to refuse to allow that. It was wrong to disregard the appeals of spectators who were pleading with the police officers to pick George Floyd up and to pay attention to his complaints about being able, unable to breathe, breathe. It was wrong to withhold information about who those four officers were after they were fired. It was wrong not to arrest them. It was wrong not to treat them as criminal press suspects. It was wrong not to treat them as killers. It was wrong to conceal their identities. And anybody knows that if that had been four civilians, and particularly if it had been four black people, who were involved in the death of a white person, they would have been arrested. They would have been arrested that day. They would have been arrested because video would have been viewed as probable cause for an arrest and they would have been arrested. The arrest would have been public. You would have seen them do the perp walk. You haven't seen a single perp walk. Darren Chauvin, the one, the police officer who held his neck on George Floyd's, his knee on George Floyd's neck, that was taken into custody, but you never saw footage of him being handcuffed. You did not see footage of him being fingerprinted. You did not see any footage of him being booked in. That was wrong. George. Floyd was publicly killed by four police officers and for any of the police officers to not be publicly arrested and publicly booked and publicly fingerprinted shows that police officers get lenient treatment for killing people if they are arrested at all. It was wrong to assign the investigation and prosecution of George Floyd's death to the Hennepin County prosecutor who had publicly said he didn't know whether or not there was evidence of a crime. I'm glad Minneapolis Police Department chief on Sunday afternoon publicly expressed sympathy to the family 
of George Floyd during an interview with CNN reporter. But why did it take so long for the chief of police to express sympathy to the family of George Floyd. Why did it take six days from May 25 to May 31 before any member of the Floyd family heard a word of sympathy from the Minneapolis Police Department? Here's how I suggest we fix this. First, publicly arrest the other three police officers who were involved in the death of George Floyd. Publicly arrest them. Much of the protests and expressions of outrage that have happened since George Floyd's death can be traced to the fact that no one was arrested until May 29 and only one of the police officers was arrested and when that one was arrested, his arrest occurred, he went into custody behind closed doors it was not conspicuous it was not transparent secondly honor and the memory life of George Floyd. The Floyd family deserves that. The Floyd family should be consoled and supported. George Floyd's name and memory should be publicly honored at the cost of the city of Minneapolis in a manner supported by and approved by the Floyd family. The investigation into Floyd's death should continue to be handled by Keith Ellison, the Attorney General of Minnesota and the officers should be recharged, not with the lowest form of murder, murder in the third degree, as was done by the Hennepin County Prosecutor to Derek Chauvin, but to the higher offense of second degree unintentional murder. Yes, there is a offense, second degree unintentional murder, felony murder, and that should be done. And that can be done. Felony murder, that charge carries a punishment of up to 40 years imprisonment. All four of the officers should be charged with that. The other three who stood by should be charged as accomplices. And under many sort of law, if you intentionally aid someone in committing an offense, you can be charged and held criminally liable for that offense. The other three officers intentionally kept onlookers from assisting George Floyd, kept onlookers from supporting George Floyd, denied and disregarded appeals from onlookers to help George Floyd. They were complicit in the death of George Floyd. They were intentionally complicit and they should be charged with second degree unintentional murder. Unintentional murder because what was done was an assault. Under Minnesota law, if you assault somebody and cause great bodily harm, you can be held liable for assault in the first degree, which carries a punishment of up to 30 years in prison in Minnesota prison. That's a felony. And so why would those four officers not be charged with second degree unintentional murder? Thirdly, we should hope and expect, or fourth I should say, there should be a public apology for George Floyd's death from the city of Minneapolis, from the state of Minnesota, and from the Minneapolis Police Department, and the Minneapolis Police Department and the Minneapolis City should negotiate and reach and publicize a fair and substantial monetary settlement with the family of George Floyd. Uh, 
that includes admission of liability for his debt and payment of all damages associated with his, with his the assault on his life and his death to include his conscious pain and suffering before he died, his mental anguish before he died, his funeral expenses, George Floyd's lost earnings from the time of his death until the end of his normal life expectancy, and then payment of damages to George Floyd's close relatives for their mental anguish. We should have an independent mediator mediate between the Minneapolis Police Department and communities of color in Minneapolis about their abusive and homicidal policing practices. But that independent mediator should be from the Minneapolis Council of Churches. A prophetic moral voice rather than someone associated with the civic community, civic leadership of Minneapolis. The Minnesota Police Department needs cultural competency, assistance, and counsel. And independent persons should be retained at the cost of the city of Minnesota Minneapolis for that purpose and that training should continue for more than a little time. George Floyd was 46 years old when he was killed. That training should in cultural competence and inclusion should continue and be mandated by all members of Minneapolis Police Department rank and file and leaders for not less than 90 years. Less than twice of George Floyd's lifetime. The Minneapolis Police Department should and the Minneapolis City should enter into a 10-year agreement for a pattern and practice investigation and monitoring by the U.S. Department of Justice. Lifetime mental health counseling and treatment should be obtained for and paid for by the City of Minneapolis for the immediate family of George Floyd, as well as for the persons who were on site and witnessed him being killed on May 25. George Floyd's relatives suffered an indescribable loss, a horrible loss when he was killed, and their horror was only compounded by the culturally incompetent ways that the city of Minneapolis and the city and state of Minnesota and the MPD responded to protests about his death but also the people who physically witnessed George Floyd's assault and death, his murder, including the teenager who bravely filmed what happened to George Floyd, have memories that will haunt them for the rest of their lives. And those memories will take physical and mental and moral tolls. The city of Minnesota and the Minneapolis Police Department should pay for the mental health counseling and treatment those people need for as long as they need it. There should also be a public fund to repair and rebuild buildings destroyed and, and damaged in communities of color during the protests surrounding the murder of George Floyd. Those protests in communities of color resulted in damages to buildings where businesses operated that provided groceries and medication and medical supplies and other essential services and a publicly funded fund to restore those businesses and property owners would demonstrate civic commitment to repentance and healing for generations of systemic discrimination and racism and tolerance of abusive and homicidal police, department, police behavior by the MPD. Finally, the militarized occupation of Minneapolis must end immediately. Remember, culturally incompetent policing is what got this situation started. A culturally incompetent response to a report of a suspected forgery of $20 is what got this started. And then we compound that by the behavior of the four police officers who killed George Floyd. And then we compound that by the response of riot police to peaceful protesters on Wednesday, May 27. And then we compound that by the militarization of the National Guard in response to public protests to what happened to George Floyd. 
Nonviolent, peaceful protest about the murder of an unarmed and helpless black man by the police is not a crime in Minnesota. Protesters have the right to openly and fiercely condemn George Floyd's murder, and they have the right to condemn the refusal of the MPD to arrest the killers, and they have the right to condemn and protest the leniency that has been given the killers since George Floyd was murdered. To their credit, the protesters have refused to be bullied and bossed. They have refused to be bossed and bullied in the face of tear gas and pepper spray and flashbang grenades and baton wearing, carrying police officers and assault rifle toting National Guard people. Deploying military force against grieving, peaceful, and oppressed people is tyranny, not democracy. And it certainly isn't going to heal anyone. So the militarization of Minneapolis should end immediately. Everyone should pray for the family of George Floyd. We should also pray for the people who are protecting his family and protesting his murder by the MPD. We should protest the refusal to arrest and aggressively prosecute the former MPD officers who murdered George Floyd. And we should condemn and denounce attempts to bully and beat protesters, peaceful protesters, into silence about the injustices surrounding the murder of George Floyd and the refusal to arrest his killers and the refusal to aggressively prosecute them. That's what went wrong. That's why it's wrong. That's what we can do to begin making it right. My name is Wendell Griffin in Little Rock, Arkansas. I hope we'll begin doing it.